folks. I'm Keith Bowen. This is Hard Rock University. Uh, this is kind of a cooking edition, field edition, etc. Because when you're out in the field, I don't know about you, but I like to eat. I like to eat tasty food. I like to eat nutritious food. And I like to eat easy to prepare food all at the same time. Plus, Eva has a very low carb diet that she has to adhere to. So this puts a few constraints on things and uh, on the live stream I mentioned that I do a special low-carb French toast uh, that we take with us in large quantities and uh, make sandwiches and snacks and this and that and the other out of. So I was going to show the, the recipe of that and I just realized the one thing I don't have on the counter here is the in fact bread. I was going to reach back and grab it for you. Now this is the bread we use. This tastes amazingly like real bread. As a matter of fact, if you didn't know, you wouldn't know the difference. But it's only got one gram of carbs per slice. So that's the basis. Be advised, people. This stuff is made with what they call a modified wheat starch. That does not work for everybody. I personally can eat it. Also, most of these types of products are extremely high fiber or extremely high gluten. So if you have IBS or you have celiac, you got to stay away from them, obviously. Now, this is oat fiber. We put this in to give the mix a little extra body. This is the kind of French toast that's made as an egg wash not the kind that's made with a flour batter. I do it because it makes it taste more like the batter that my mom used to make. Anyhow, since we're trying to avoid carbs, everything is basically proteins and fats. And uh, so we start with eggs. Now I'm going to do about a whole loaf of bread there. Uh, it's a fairly short trip. Uh, weather's not ideal, so we'll see how long we're out there, but probably be about 48 hours total, and we'll see how it works. But this stuff lasts really well refrigerated, and so you can bring it back with you if you have extra, which we did last trip when the weather closed in on us, and just put it in the fridge and have French toast for a day or two. Pro tip, this makes good sandwiches both with sweet fillings like peanut butter and jelly and with savory fillings like lunch meat and cheddar cheese. And now I'm going to put in about an equal amount of cream. In this case, about a pint or so for seven eggs. For non-keto people, you can use milk. Sure. Okay, we're uh, and a couple of scoops of sucralose, ketoink, and about a tablespoon of vanilla. Eva loves her some vanilla. And lots of cinnamon and ginger. She likes cinnamon and ginger. And I'm not the kind of person that usually does routine recipes with great precision. I just kind of sprinkle it in. So take a look and show them about how much we got there, little one. Okay. Start that kind of soaking a little bit. Add a little bit of salt. And again, this is not really necessary, oat bran or gluten or anything like that. I just put it in there. Yeah. I say it makes it taste more bread-like. Now, 
you take a look, you can see that's a little thick for a butt batter. I just add a little bit of water. Just thin it out just a touch. Strictly his imagination, it's not thick. So, at this point, I will turn on the stove. Use a really good griddle. Now you don't have to use much fat. I like a square griddle because four pieces of French toast fits perfectly fine on that. So while that's heating up, I'll put the rest of this stuff away and we'll come back in a minute. So, the griddle's starting to get hot. Being an electric stove, of course, it's hotter in the middle than the outside. But we'll just have to do what we can. And I keep from dribbling stuff all over everywhere. And if you take the fork and put it in upside down like that, it stays there. If you put it in this way, it has a tendency to just... Slide down and get submerged? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. And that's... Forks tend to do that. Which gets me quite annoyed. <sighs> you are just so picky. Yes, pretty much. Now the, uh, because the griddle is not heating super evenly, because it's an electric stove, I'll take these, rotate them 180 degrees, and that will get them to cook more evenly. You don't want a super hot griddle because you want it to cook through as it's an egg product and you're trying to uh, cook it all the way through. This is essentially a liquid custard that you're cooking on here. At the end, if I have any left over, I just pour it in there and cook it up for like a dessert. See how even that is? It wouldn't have been even if I hadn't done that 180 degree thingy. And as another pro tip, if you do this particular recipe minus the sucralose and put in like a little Worcestershire sauce or some savory herbs, mm. you can make a really fantastic savory style French toast. Dude there has never tried it, but he is culturally deprived. Therefore, don't pay any attention to his that, noises. That sounds like culturally depraved, not deprived. Okay. Just telling you, uh, savory French toast is every bit as good as sweet. And it's a great way to use bread that's about to go stale. See how that's just starting to brown there? So now if I turn that 180 degrees, Yeah, it's supposed to stay on the spatula or on the griddle. A little bit enthusiastic there. Luckily, I have thin skin on my fingers. <laughs> you see, what you're supposed to do is do a chef thing and flip your griddle so all four of them flip over at once. That would be TikTok worky. <laughs> Dude, if you could do that, we would make TikTok videos like you would not believe. Okay. So now I see it's pretty darn even. And I lay them over here. We just happen to have this square plate, which comes in handy because we're cooling them all off now. I'm making sure they're all thoroughly cooked. If you don't move your bowl over the pan, you will dribble batter all over everything in between. Unless you're maybe really, really good or something. But I am not the galloping gourmet. You're not? Nope. 
Really? As I said, I'm the galomping gourmet. Anyhow, so that's only going to be 16 slices. That's a little light for us. Let me get another floor over here. That's going to need to be flipped in a minute here. It's starting to smoke. I know. Steam. Right there. And the pan is, in fact, a Walmart special, I believe. I haven't bought it at Walmart. Yeah. So nothing fancy in the way of cookware. Oh, heck no. We do not have fancy cookware because the bear here is very hard on cookware, actually. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. So you're not supposed to use a Brillo pad on Teflon? I'm shocked. You're, you're not supposed to use metal spoons to stir things in Teflon coated pans. And, yeah. What use is it then? Well, just saying. Now, as you can see, these are not quite cooked, in my opinion. So, when the other side's done, I'm going to flip those over and give them a little bit more time make sure those eggs are thoroughly cooked. And by doing it like this, they cool off quicker. So we can put them in the refrigerator faster. See, that one's really not cooked. Yeah, that side of the pan that they're on now is harder than the other side. Apparently so. It looks like we have just enough batter here to do 16 pieces of French. I'll get two more out of that, but... Maybe 18. Well, maybe about it, girl. Oh. Now, now you're getting... I've been cooking French toast since I was six. So, 60 years, huh? Yeah. 61 years. Yeah. Good gravy. I've been cooking it since I was five, so 53 plus 61 is 114 years combined experience with French toast hood. Let's see how this is a little light there. I flip it this way work but it's not even ready yet so let's go there same thing here rotate it it's all about the geometry oh actually it's all about needing one of Graham's cast iron square griddles from back in the day I don't it gives them such good flavor. Iron gives them flavor? Oh, yes. Cast iron griddles give pancakes and um, French toast amazing flavor. If you say so. I have no clue. Dude, sometimes I wonder about you. Well, pretty much every day you wonder about me.
smile for the camera. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Ninja Chef. Did you ever see Yan Can cook? Oh, heck yeah. Man, that guy's good. I like Yan Can cook. He made the galloping gourmet look like a beginner. You ever see him completely bone a chicken in like 30 seconds? Mm hmm. Wow. That feels so inadequate. No, it's not like we bone chickens very often. I do. <laughs> well. The Neanderthal way. Go back to my roots. And there we are. And there's 18 slices of French toast. And we will now let those cool. And believe it or not, they even provided us with a handy container to put them back in. So that's our French toast for the road recipe. And we eat it just as it is. We put it in the ice chest, but then we eat it straight we put hamburgers lunch meat anything like that in there peanut butter and jelly peanut butter and jelly works well whatever and i'm also going to take a little bit of bread left over and use some balsamic vinegar glaze and some pork we've got left over so we will eat good we will eat happy happy prospecting and keep it safe out there uh -huh.